Hello there and a very warm welcome again to our YouTube, well one of our very interesting interviews of one of our esteemed consultant medical professionals and this morning I'm delighted to say we're joined by highly revered London-based consultant urologist Professor Francis Chinigwondo, MBE, and he's here to talk to us today all about prostate cancer, the diagnosis and the treatment options. Um, so Professor Chinigwondo, before we get into the questions, if you'd like to maybe provide a brief background a summary on your medical experience so far. Yes, thank you very much. Um, as you say, I'm a, um, a London-based consultant urological surgeon. I've been a consultant now for, what, 26 years, yeah, since 1996. I have uh, a wide range of experiences right across urology, in particular in prostate cancer. I've done a lot of research in the area of prostate cancer. Um, particularly how it disproportionately affects um, black men. Um, I've headed up various um, uh, groups. I've been an um, advisor to the Department of Health and, and therefore the government on, on prostate cancer. Um, I'm also chairman of a charity called Cancer Black Care. And many of our, our, our clients, many of our service users do have prostate cancer. I'm also a trustee of TACL, which is a National Federation of Prostate Cancer Support Groups. I also work closely with uh, Prostate Cancer UK. Apart from the uh, NHS, um, I also work in the private sector. And to round things off, I do much medical legal work. Fantastic, yeah. Professor Chinigwundu. Uh, a very interesting, uh, well, uh, plentiful uh, of experience, uh, a lot of background in the medical fields, especially of urology and dealing with prostate cancer across all ages of men, I suppose. And you probably have seen a lot of diagnosis where people mightn't have been expecting a diagnosis. Is that quite common? Sure. Yes, it is, because there is, there is a, a blood test called prostate-specific antigen or PSA, and a man can have no symptoms whatsoever, no urinary symptoms, no sexual symptoms, be perfectly fine, and they do a routine PSA blood test and it shows up an, an abnormality, which then can lead on to a diagnosis of prostate cancer. Absolutely. And uh, well, uh, Professor Chinig Wundu, another question uh, with regards to prostate cancer, are cases of prostate cancer increasing or decreasing at the moment and over the last few years? What, what would you say? Well, uh, it's it's definitely not decreasing. Uh, if anything, it, it is increasing. I mean, there's something like fifty thousand plus new prostate cancer diagnoses every year in, in in the UK, and indeed, it's now overtaken breast cancer in terms of of how common it is. Um, up until two or three years ago, there were more women being diagnosed with breast cancer than prostate cancer, but that has that has changed now. So it is the most common cancer. Uh, certainly uh, in men. Wow, absolutely. And uh, you, you mentioned they're uh, going to maybe get a, an accidental diagnosis, if we say, um, if men present with symptoms, when would you encourage them to get their prostate checked out? Well, I think, I think there's two things here. I think if you have urinary symptoms, such as your flow becomes very slow or you're going very frequently, um, particularly if you're over the age of 50, then you should see your, your, your primary care uh, physician and amongst the tests you would have is a PSA blood test. Now, ha having said that, if you have no symptoms whatsoever, I would still recommend that you get a PSA blood test from the age of 50 if you're white or if you're of Asian uh, heritage, but 45 years if you are black because black men have twice the risk of developing prostate cancer and not only that, they tend to develop it on average five years younger. So I would encourage all men from either 45 or from age 50 to get a PSA blood test. Unfortunately, we don't have a national screening program, uh, which I think we should do, but, but we haven't. Therefore, it uh, behoves the man, it's up to the man to, uh, to, to get himself uh, tested. Absolutely, Professor Chinning Gwunde. And well, with regards to men who may be younger than 45, is it quite common for men to be diagnosed with prostate cancer at a young age? 
I would, no, it's 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 not common. I would say probably one to two percent of prostate cancers are diagnosed under the age of uh, forty-five to fifty. So it's generally middle-aged to older men. Now you can develop prostate cancer, you know, much younger than forty-five. I've seen men uh, under forty with prostate cancer. Uh, those men tend to have a family history of prostate cancer. In other words, their their father or grandfather or uncles or brothers develop prostate cancer at a relatively young age. And because prostate cancer tends to run in families, if you have a family history of prostate cancer, then your risk is increased uh, even, even further. So I would say for younger men, perhaps 40, perhaps a little, little less, with a strong family history, they should start getting themselves tested. They should start getting the blood test younger than the currently recommended 45 if you're black, 50 if, if you're white. Fantastic. And leading nicely on to our next question then, Professor, uh, how can I best reduce my chances of being diagnosed with prostate cancer? Is there anything that you would recommend? Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a tough one um, because we're not really sure. In fact, we don't know what, to, what is it that triggers the development of, of prostate cancer. We know there are certain risk factors such as uh, being, of, uh, uh, being black, uh, having a family history of prostate cancer or having a family history where on the female side there's a history of breast cancer or ovarian cancer or the certain genes like the, the so-called BRCA1 gene that gives you an increased risk of, of getting uh, prostate cancer. Um, apart from those factors, we don't really know what is it that triggers this in some men as opposed to others. I mean, we say and we we imagine, and the evidence is is uh, we're yet to catch up. But we imagine that if you have a diet uh, containing vegetables, uh, fresh fruits, less less processed foods, less meat, less dairy products, um, and keep yourself uh, fit, keep your weight down, um, exercise regularly make sure your vitamin D levels are, are, are good. Um, we think these may, be, may offer some protection, but the, the, the evidence is lacking, but there is um, data to suggest that adhering to those things is the best you can do to try and uh, uh, reduce your risk. Absolutely. Uh, very reassuring for patients to, to hear if they are engaging in uh, plentiful exercise and if they have a balanced diet, they, it's quite reassuring to hear that they are on the right track in terms of prevent, prevention of prostate cancer. Oh, and, and what about the uh, outlook then for patients, Professor, when they are diagnosed? How is the prog prognosis? I suppose it depends on the stage. That's, that's right. So the prognosis for early prostate cancer, which is where the, the cancer is with, it's confined and within the prostate gland, the outlook is extremely positive. I mean, we're talking about something like, you know, 98% 10-year survival uh, if it's caught early. If, however, the, the, the prostate cancer has already spread at the time of diagnosis, so for example, if it's spread into the bones or the lymph glands or, or even the liver, the outlook is, is, is not nearly quite so good. So the whole thing is to catch, catch prostate cancer early. As with all cancers, the focus is on the early diagnosis. And one of the things that I implore men to do is not to wait until they have urinary symptoms or erectile dysfunction, or they see blood in their urine or they get severe back pain. Don't wait until they get those symptoms because unfortunately, Oftentimes, by the time you've developed those symptoms, the disease has already gone beyond the prostate gland. So if you catch the prostate cancer early, which fortunately it, it's the majority of men that we see uh, with treatments, and there's a variety of very good treatments indeed, with treatments, the outlook is very good indeed. Fantastic. And you mentioned there, Professor, the treatment. I suppose in the last few years, how have the advancements really been? Have you seen... Uh, a lot of advancements to really suggest that treatment is very, very effective now compared to a few years ago. I think the, the treatments have been effective for, for quite a good number of years now. I think what has changed 
in the last few years is some of the the uh, technology that, to be, that that we use in those treatments. So, for example, uh, surgery, uh, which is a good treatment for for prostate cancer, used to be done open. In other words, the man would have a a, a big incision across his lower abdomen through which the prostate could be removed in its entirety. Now we have uh, robotically assisted technologies. So this is like keyhole surgery, uh, where the surgeon can, can sit at a, at a console, in other words, not actually physically touching the patient. The robotic arms are actually through tiny incisions into, into the abdomen. And the surgeon can very precisely control these instruments and do a very good job of removing the prostate and putting things uh, back together. So the technology has, in, has increased um, the, uh, the um, efficacy, I guess, of the way the surgery is done. And we also have uh, a brachytherapy, which is a, a, another excellent treatment for, for early prostate cancer, whereby we can insert tiny radioactive pellets into the prostate gland where they lodge and give off radiation to uh, destroy the, the, uh, the prostate cancer. And again, as the years go by, the, the technology gets better and better for being able to deliver uh, that particular type of therapy. We also have um, external uh, radiation, which used to take seven weeks to do. It's now down to four weeks because we have uh, good, good evidence that if you increase the dose in less sessions, you get just as good, uh, just as good uh, results. And more recently, in the past few years, uh, the, the concept of focal therapy has been introduced. So rather than surgery or external radiation or the brachytherapy I, I mentioned previously, which treat the whole gland, it's possible if the man just has a small amount of prostate cancer in a well-defined area, you can target that area rather than targeting the entire um, prostate gland. And you can destroy with an energy source that, that area, which minimizes the side effects. So as time goes by and there's more and more research, um, better and, uh, treatments uh, evolve or we refine the treatments that we al already have. So there's lots of very good ways of dealing and indeed curing prostate cancer if it's found early enough. Because um, in the early stages, prostate cancer doesn't have any, any symptoms this is where the importance of men getting themselves regularly tested with a PSA blood test uh, once a year, which the, the GPs can, um, can, can do for them. So I encourage men to be proactive and don't wait until you have symptoms. And in the same way that you get your blood pressure checked every year or you have blood tests to check that you're not developing diabetes or whatever, have a, have a, have a, a PSA uh, once a year. If the PSA is raised, if the blood test is raised, then you'll be referred to a urologist who will then organize an MRI scan. And after that, a biopsy of the prostate where we put a needle in and take samples. And if that comes back as showing cancer, then as I mentioned before, we have a, a, a wide array of treatments that we can offer uh, the man. Absolutely, Professor. Um, well, well explained in terms of all of the treatment options available. And you mentioned prostate removal. And then in what, in what cases would the prostate need to be removed in prostate cancer cases? Well, I mean, that's a good question. Um, with early prostate cancer, I mean, there, there are a variety of treatments and some will suit one man rather than another. So, uh, and oftentimes any of those treatments can be suitable for, uh, for a man. So in terms of removing the prostate gland altogether, it, it tends to be uh, younger men, i.e. under the age of, of, uh, of 70, uh, particularly if the man has significant urinary symptoms um, with the disease kind of confined to the prostate gland. Um, there are side effects to, to some of these treatments and so often the decision as to whether it's going to be radical surgery or, or, or brachytherapy seeds or external radiation will depend um, not just on the, the, the type of prostate cancer that the man has, because there's different types, 
first of all, depend, depend on the man's lifestyle. It will depend on the, the the possible side effect profile and what the man is willing to to uh, trade off in terms of cure versus side effects. So I would say I would say to men, there isn't a single best treatment. You know, there are a variety of treatments which are equally good, and the man, after discussion with the urologist and the oncologist, um, can come to uh, a decision as what may be best for them. So it's not one treatment suits everybody. But fortunately, there are a variety of equally good options, surgery being one of them. Fantastic, Professor Chinigwanda. Uh, really reassuring again for, for patients in terms of the treatment options available. So fantastic that you've included that. Um, and well, our, our final question then for our interview today, re regarding the early warning signs, you mentioned them earlier. Does it always necessarily indicate prostate cancer? Uh, no, indeed. Uh, indeed not. So some of the, the urinary symptoms that uh, I'll, I'll just uh, briefly mention again, such as uh, slow urinary flow or a delay before the stream starts or a feeling that you've not emptied yourself completely or going more often than, than usual, getting up several times at night, having to get to the toilet in a hurry, and at times perhaps not making it before the urine starts. These are symptoms that indicate some problem with the prostate. Most times, actually, it's to do with the prostate gland being enlarged and squeezing the water pipe that runs through the middle of it. The problem is those symptoms of a, of a benign enlarged prostate are the same as if there is some prostate cancer. So you can't tell by the symptoms whether it's the more, I mean, half of men over the age of 50 are going to have a prostate gland that enlarges and causes some urinary disturbance. Um, some of those men will have prostate cancer, but the majority won't. So it's only by seeing your primary care physician, if you have those kind of symptoms, getting a, a, a PSA a blood test, indeed uh, possibly having a, a, a rectal examination where the doctor can actually put a finger into the back passage and actually feel the prostate. To, um, by that, you can tell the size of the prostate. You can also tell its consistency. At the time, just by putting a finger into the back passage, you can get a good idea as to whether the prostate gland is likely to be cancerous or not. So those symptoms don't are not diagnostic of prostate cancer by any means. You know, statistically speaking, those symptoms are more likely to be due to an enlarged prostate, but you can't tell, which is why you need to get yourself checked out. Get the PSA blood test. If the PSA blood test is, is higher than it should be, and the PSA depends on your age, so if it's higher than it should be for your age, then you would be referred to a urologist to investigate things further. Fantastic. Well, Professor Francis Chinagwanda, MBE, thank you very, very much for your time uh, with us at Top Doctors for this interview uh, today. And anybody out there who is more interested in Professor Francis Chinagwanda, if they would like more information about his areas of expertise, you can book a consultation with him via his Top Doctors profile on www.topdoctors.co.uk. Professor, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.